<clears throat> hey everyone, welcome back uh, to my New England Metholic, Me megalithic adventure. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you some micro patterns, specifically in walls, which led me to find uh, what I believe to be the most impressive megalith I have found so far in this region of New Hampshire. Um, so let's get started. Uh, if you've watched my other videos, you'll remember I had mentioned many triangular boulders in walls. Uh, something I want to draw your attention to here is sitting right beneath that triangle um, on top of the base stones on the forest floor. You see three small sort of wedges of rock, and you see these small pieces of rock um, supporting larger structures, uh, but you see these flat sort of support pieces, and uh, I think this uh, goes against the farmer's clearing fields, building rock walls randomly, uh, not randomly, but throwing the rubble as they would clear a field. Um, I think that turns that theory on its head. When you look at other examples, this is actually that same wall on a mountain south of my main area of interest. Um, this mountain contained uh, two or three very long walls going up a long slope. And as I said, this wall is, an, is, is part of the same wall that I just showed you with that triangle. And notice on the left of the picture, you see two very long, thin boulders. And on the, on the forest floor, they're sitting on, again, those little wedges. So I'm looking at these wedges here, these little small supporting rocks that look like they're there to just uh, balance out uh, uh, differences in sizes to make things level. Uh, you see that again, again, the same wall right to the left of my head. You see four of those small little wedges of rock. And above that, uh, not a lentil, but it's something lentil-like. But um, again, this doesn't look like uh, a boulder that's floating up through people's fields. Uh, and notice the wall is one boulder high. I think this one boulder high concept is going to be very important. Um, because, again, if you're just throwing random rubble on the side of your field, you're not building everything exactly one boulder high. This is a, what I believe to be turtle effigy, a few miles, um, 10, 15, 20 miles north of that area. This is in the area where I found the biggest megaliths. Um, I believe this would be a turtle effigy. I think the large uh, oval boulder on the far right would represent its head. Represented its head. Uh, circled in yellow is a large piece, the largest piece of quartz that I found, but this adorns this effigy. And then below the turtle's head again, you see those, uh, you see three of the small uh, wedge pieces of rock supporting it, giving it a little uh, symmetry. Um, and then uh, another pattern here, which I haven't mentioned yet, because it is, it is a small pattern, and I felt it would be better to present this later after I show the larger structures. Um, below the quartz boulder, you see sort of a triangular boulder uh, or triangular rock that's uh, surrounded by small stones. Um, and uh, if, if you just think about that configuration as a chest, um, very uh, nearby, very near this structure, I found an area of high concentrations of very small walls and potential mounds. Um, and in one of those walls, I found that same chest configuration where you see a triangular boulder. This time you can see a notch in it with a small rock tucked in that notch. And here those two are side by side. So if you just take a look at that triangular boulder uh, in the center of both images, you can see it's balanced on top of what would be a serpent's head with a small rock, uh, small rock notched into the top of the triangle. Um, so there are some distinct uh, possibilities of, of similarities between these two uh, objects. Uh, this is the side view of a wall, which I had shown in my first video. This um, ends on a large round piece of boulder. There's rectangular block cut out near it. There's a lot of uh, corresponding patterns uh, uh, centering on this piece of wall. Um, above the lentil, uh, the left side, you can see two uh, notched uh, rocks right on top of each other, very similar in shape. And I mentioned bef this before but they are rotated 180 degrees to the left, just to the left of that. And you can see that sort of notching style, triangular shape. And going back to those flat wedges of stone, uh, you can see the middle triangle is balanced on its right side bottom uh, on two wedges of stone. Interestingly enough, what led me to this wall, uh, and this is showing how these walls led me to this specific megalith. Um, the wall which led me to this wall has a triangle right in the center 
and it's and that's circled in blue the triangle circle circled in blue the green circle uh, looks like um, the bowler to its left has a notch in it uh, to fit the triangle so not only do I think people were planning this these walls aesthetically but they're actually manipulating the stone to fit other stones nicely um, and the red circle below the triangle you see an oval piece of rock um, sitting on a boulder and if we zoom into that oval piece of rock sitting on the boulder we see that's actually sitting on a little shelf um, so I do think that this shelf would have been would have been cut out to feature this oval and I do think this lends credence to what um, some of the nearer historians mentioned about these structures providing signals on how to find other structures you see common design motifs so whether that was an accident on purpose is unimportant but that's effectively what this does and um, extrapolating on that um, I decided to follow this wall circuitry into very thick brush into a, a small wall because right again right near that triangle is a what I call a pointer stone um, so this is less a wall than just a row of stones but it's part of a wall network and you have this really long um, pointer stone as I call it here's another angle and that led me I believe to the right you can see the wall that I followed to the um, uh, wall on the oval uh, with the rectangular blocks cut out um, um, I, 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 I found that by following the wall directly to the right of this pointer so in a way it's actually very logical these walls are actually maps and guides in and of themselves <clears throat> And attached to this wall network well not attached but very close by uh, related to we have this interesting wall with the quartz um, wedged perfectly into place and this wall I had mentioned features in this wall in my first video but hadn't mentioned that they connected to this quartz wall so now you're hopefully if you've watched everything in chronological order you can see how these different patterns are uh, in and of themselves interesting but ultimately actually they're part of the same features which which lead to bigger features so um, uh, back uh, further in my exploration of this wall I found this vertical lentil which I mentioned and then as you move uphill from here about 50 feet the wall transforms into these domino shapes and it was this exact wall which led me to the megalith that I always reference as my number one find this is my favorite one I think is most telling that there is a lot more uh, going on uh, in this area in terms of civilization than we know today in fact close to nothing I think this is very unexplored territory and uh, my next slide my final slide this is a Google Earth view of uh, the small mountain top surrounded by walls this was kind of what this is what finished my first night of exploring New Hampshire on Google Earth after I became interested in the subject um, notice there's a large boulder uh, surrounded by what looks like a square-ish uh, pile of rocks so that was the most geometric boulder feature I could find of the evening and it was close to a number of, of walls and this is what uh, made me decide to uh, search for this uh, or explore this area and what's interesting is now if you were to find this spot on Google Earth um, it's actually a wind farm now this entire boulder structure has been wiped out um, so I'm concerned that other uh, important features were wiped out in this area as this wind farm was built uh, I'm still going to explore the area it's still you know uh, the vast uh, majority of this area has not been explored yet there'll still be fines um, but I do want I, I think times of the essence I feel a real sense of urgency um, in documenting these areas because the pace of development is very very quick these days and um, um, yeah it would be a shame to shame to let these things be wiped out I guess so uh, yep thank you for for watching like subscribe comment do whatever you want it's all good and uh, thank you again for for watching another one of my videos